Hey yogis, this is Erin with Rev Life. Today I am teaching a gentle restorative yoga class. It is uh, designed to help you relax and just let go. Um, there are some stretches, most of everything is on the floor, actually everything is on the floor. So get a mat, get a bolster and a block and a strap and we will get ready to go. So let's get on our mat. Um, I didn't mention before, if you do not have a bolster, like this one right here, or a strap or blocks, you can use books, you can use the strap from your bedroom robe, or you can roll up some blankets until you get a nice firm bolster to use for yoga practice or an extra yoga mat. Those always work. So first we're gonna start on our back with our blocks. We're going to take two. We're going to place one underneath our shoulder blades and the other one by our head. So always remember yoga blocks have three levels. That's medium, that's low, and this one here is high. So use the level that fits your flexibility. This is where I'm at. Sometimes I like to use the higher level on my lower back, but today this is what feels good for me. So just take a moment and get yourself into that heart opening position, making sure to just rest your legs. We're not using any of the muscles on our legs right now. So Shavasana legs, our feet laying out to the side, our arms laying out to the side, palms up towards the ceiling, and just resting, resting back on those blocks, allowing the blocks to gently open up our chest, open up our rib cage, keeping our neck nice and long. And if you need to fidget around, feel free to do so. This is your practice. And this is your time to just come to rest. And allow our mind to soften, to let our thoughts just drift not really concentrating on anything. If you do feel that your mind is wandering, just draw your attention to your breath, noticing your inhalations and your exhalations. Still breathing in our belly. Now I automatically go into ujjayi breath. Anytime I practice yoga, and that's the yoga breath where we close our mouth and breathe in and out through our nose, tightening the back of our throat, sort of like a Darth Vader voice or an ocean breath. But if you would like to open your mouth, you feel free to do so. Feel free to just Relax. We're going to be here for a few moments. So don't look at the screen. Just allow your eyes to fall closed and the skin on your forehead soften. Just let go. Draw your attention to your breath. Using all of your lungs, so breathing all the way down to your belly. And exhaling completely. But not totally drifting off. That's what Shavasana is for. And deepening your breath, slowly waking up 
turning your hands down, coming onto your elbows, gently rocking your head, and then slowly coming up off the blocks, making our way to a seated position, setting the blocks off to the side. And then inhaling the arms all the way up, stretching through your fingers. Exhale, releasing your hands down. And then coming to a gentle seat, into a cross-legged position or into easy pose with one heel in front of the other. You're also welcome to come sit on a block, lifting your hips up higher. That way you can go into that cross leg, having your ankles underneath your shins. Nice tall spine, but I much prefer to be in easy position. So bringing one heel in and then the other one in front. Taking a moment to move the fleshy part from our sitting bones away. And then coming to a nice tall spine, shoulders away from our ears. Hands down on our knees, grounding. Breathing in, engaging the core, just have a nice tall spine. And we're going to do some neck rolls. So we're going to lower the chin to our chest. And then inhaling to the right shoulder. Rolling our head back. And over to the left shoulder. And all the way back to center. And again, inhaling to the shoulder. Exhaling our head back. Inhaling to the opposite shoulder. And coming back to center. And then switching sides. So inhaling to our left shoulder. Exhaling our head back. Inhaling to the right shoulder. And exhaling to center. And one last time. Inhaling to the left shoulder. Exhaling the head back. Inhaling to the right shoulder, and then coming back to center. Gently lifting our head up, inhaling the arms up. Exhaling, lowering the right hand to the mat, inhaling that left arm up, and then exhale, bending that right elbow, coming into a side stretch, keeping our sitting bones on the mat. So a nice long stretch all the way from our fingertips down to our hips. Keeping our gaze up towards the ceiling. If that's too much on your neck, feel free to look down. Keeping the fingertips engaged. And breathing into that side body. And we'll be here for one more breath. And inhaling the arms up. Exhale, switching sides, left hand on the mat. Inhale, our right arm up. Exhale, bending the left elbow, taking our gaze to the right or down to the ground. Keeping our shoulder away from our ear. And continuing to breathe in that right side body. Feeling our rib cage expand and contract. Keeping our fingers long and wide and our hip on the mat. And then we're releasing, inhaling, center. Exhaling the hands down, pushing the palms towards the mat like you're pushing the air away from you. Inhale, rolling your shoulder blades onto your back. Just fidgeting around for a moment and inhale. Our arms all the way up. And twisting to the right, bringing that left hand onto our right knee and our right hand behind us. Inhale, tall, straight spine. And exhale, twisting. Taking our gaze behind us. Keeping our sitting bones rooted on the mat. Keeping our neck nice and long. And 
And releasing, inhaling the arms to center, fingertips all the way up to the ceiling, gaze towards our fingers. Exhale, releasing opposite side. Right hand on left knee, left hand behind us. Inhale, tall. And exhale, twisting. And twisting from the waist, so we're not leading with our neck. We don't want to strain our neck here. We're just looking to find some mobility in our spine. Bringing out the kidneys. Finding some length and some space. And then releasing, inhaling the arms all the way up. Fingertips towards eyes towards our fingertips, exhaling the hands down. And from here, making our way into bound cobbler pose, Baddha Konasana or butterfly pose. Taking a moment to adjust, bringing our hands to our ankles or onto our feet. You're also welcome to open your feet like a book. Inhale, shoulder blades on our back, nice long spine. Exhale, gently folding forward, bending from our hips so we're not hunching the back, bringing the crown of the head down. And if you have the accessibility, feel free to place your elbows on your shins or your knees, just gentle pressure. We're not going for a hard stretch here, just a gentle stretch. Breathing in. And then releasing, inhaling back to center. Fidgeting around, extending the legs out long in front of us. Bringing our hands on either side of our hips, shaking out the legs. Just finding some movement. Move your arms around. There's no wrong way to find extra stretching. So what feels good? And from here, we're gonna make our way on to our knees, bringing our knees underneath our hips. Looking at my fancy pants. Exhale. Bring our hands down, coming into a tabletop position. So taking a moment to check our foundation, hands and wrists underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, toenails pressing into the mat, hands wide. So we're pressing all the fingertips into the mat, not just the palm, and then coming into cow pose, dropping the belly, raising the gaze. Inhale, curling up and back into cat. Exhaling into cow. Inhaling into cat. Exhaling into cow. And inhaling up. And when you go into cow, getting our shoulder blades onto our back, gaze forward. And then exhale, finding space between the shoulder blades. Rolling the spine up and down keeping our hips over our knees. So the movement is coming from our spine and our shoulder blades. It's not coming from our knees and our hips. And this class is just meant to be a gentle class. So taking your time, if you're not moving with me, that is fine. Going at your own pace is fine. And then when you're ready, Pressing back into a child's pose. A wide leg child's pose, moving the knees out to the sides, big toes touching. Fingers out long in front. Pressing the forehead into the mat. Maybe even taking a deep breath in here and 
opening your mouth, exhaling it out, just sighing it out. And your fingers out long in front of you. Just feeling the body sink down. And then inhale, coming back up into our tabletop position. And we're going to make our way into a puppy pose. So we're going to keep our tabletop legs, so hips over the knees. And then we're going to walk our hands out in front of us into downward facing dog arms. So we want to get a nice line all the way from our fingertips, up our spine, all the way to the sacrum. Getting that stretch in our shoulders and our back and our lower back while keeping the hips over the knees. An option, if that is too much stretch on you, if you want to come down onto your forearms in a modified puppy pose, that's what I'm showing you here, keeping the palms uh, parallel with each other and feeling that stretch in our shoulders. And then inhale, coming back up to our tabletop. From here, we're going to thread the needle. We're going to start with our right hand. So moving, making space for yourself. I'm moving that bolster. We're going to inhale this right arm out and up. And then exhale, threading the needle, bringing that arm through, resting the whole arm down. So the back of the hand wrists all the way up to the shoulder getting our right ear on to the mat, keeping that um, tabletop leg so our hip is over our knee. Different options for your opposite hand. I like to tent the fingers. I feel um, a nicer stretch when I do that. You're also welcome to bind, bringing the hand behind your back or extending that arm, the left arm, out long in front of you. But like I said, I enjoy having my fingers tented, finding that extra stretch in between my shoulder blades where I carry a lot of tension. Now, a lot of people carry a lot of tension. And then releasing, placing left palm down, inhaling that right arm all the way up, exhaling the hand down. And then we're going to switch sides. Inhaling the left arm up, exhale. Threading the needle on the opposite side. So taking a moment to get into the position. Getting your left arm all the way on the mat, shoulder all the way down to your fingertips. Tenting the fingertips of your right hand, getting that extra twist in your back. Left ear on the mat. Keeping the hips even. Keeping our breath even. And then when you're ready, inhaling that left arm up, exhale, coming back to our tabletop. Pressing back into, uh, well, not to child's pose. We're coming onto our seats. We're going to take our blocks. We're going to do an extended child pose with our hands and our arms on the blocks. So I'm in a traditional child pose legs, bringing my knees together. As you can see here, I like to call that the little pill child's pose. So our knees are together. The legs are all zipped up. If it is more comfortable for you to do the wide-legged child's pose, feel free. If this is too hard on your knees, feel free to take a bolster or a towel or a blanket and place it in between your knees and your thighs just to give you some space so we're not putting so much pressure on our knees. And then we're going to slowly walk the arms out in front of you. And I'll play around with this pose right here. <clears throat> Didn't have a lot of uh, stretch in my arms. So bringing my palms on to the, uh, the blocks. Just finding that length. 
lifting the arms up off the mat. And then resting our forehead onto the mat. If you have an extra block or a book, you're welcome to place it underneath your forehead. Just continuing to breathe. Inhale, coming back up onto our hands. Tabletop with our hands on the block. Coming off the blocks. Coming back to our seated position. Releasing the legs out long in front of us. And from here, we're going to come on to our bolster. So like I said before, bolster, blocks, and our strap is what we'll need. Um, you can use a rolled up blanket, yoga mat, uh, the tie for your robe, some books. There's a lot of different options. Now bringing your strap, we're going to... Um, loop it through the belt. So if you do are using a, a belt for your robe, you're gonna to want to tie it, or you don't have to use the strap at all. It's just optional. We're gonna take the bolster, placing it on our lower back. We'll use the blocks to support our knees. We're going to do a Supta Bada Kanasana with support and with the belt. So without it, you're welcome to just come onto the bolster, place the blocks underneath your knees for extra support. So we're not pulling too much on our groin. And the other option is to take this belt. We're going to bring it around our waist. So slip it over your head, arms through, so the belt is on your back. And then we're going to take the opposite end and loop it around our feet. So adjust it until it's comfortable for you. This is what it looks like from this angle. So we're using the prop to do a lot of the pose. This is a restorative yoga pose. And then coming down onto our back, taking those blocks, placing them underneath our knees, and whatever level works for you. And then placing our hands on our belly. Another hand options are just having your back of your hands on the floor, palms facing the ceiling, or you can reach your arms above your head. Or you can place one hand on your heart and one hand on your stomach, just noticing the rise and fall of your breath. And with each inhale and each exhale, just beginning to let go. Taking this time for yourself and knowing that all those other things you have to do, they do not need to be done yet. Feeling your heart slow, your pulse slow, your breath slow. A little friend in the, in the screen in a second. So we're going to inhale, just rolling our wrists. Stretch your arms above your head, just stretching all the way down, feeling that uh, release on your lower back because of the strap. Moving the blocks out of the way. This is my puppy. 
bringing the belt over our head, setting it off to the side, moving the blocks out of the way, and then removing the bolster from our mat. Now we're going to do another um, heart opener. If you do not have a bolster, but you have a block, you are welcome to do this on a block. We're going to lay on top of the dog. We're going to place the bolster underneath our back, just getting that natural curve in our spine. <laughs> and Missy really wants to do yoga with me, so I'm just going to set her here on my stomach. I'm just coming into a modified Shavasana. And this is what this would look like on a block. Placing the block underneath our shoulder blades. So our shoulders will be down on the mat. Arms out to the side, feeling that opener. You're welcome to bring your arms up above you. Just shift around, fidget around, and see what feels good on your back. And if you do have a puppy on you, feel free to pet the puppy. And then when you're ready, we're going to inhale, coming onto our elbows, releasing that block. Stretching your arms in the opposite direction of your toes. Setting the blocks off to the side and coming into um, Shavasana. couple shavasanas. This is our first one. Feeling the difference in your spine after laying on those blocks. And then inhale, drawing the knees into our chest, wrapping your arms around your knees. And from here we're going to do a spinal twist. So lowering the legs to the right, the knees to the right as we take our gaze to the left. We're just keeping our gaze towards the ceiling. And then inhaling, bringing our knees back to center, switching sides, arms out, exhale, knees to the left. Taking our gaze to the right, or not. Inhaling our knees to center. Drawing our knees into our chest. And then taking a final Shavasana, if you would like. I'm rolling onto my side. I'm going to make my way up into a seated position, but you're welcome to pause the video and just take an extra long shavasana. And when you're ready, coming into a seated position. I'm just noticing how you feel now. First, how you felt at the beginning of this class. And bring your hands together as your heart and Anjali Mudra. Thank you for practicing with me and Missy today. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Please stay safe and stay inside and take care of yourself. Self-care is important. Namaste.